In this video, we're going to have a look at similar triangles. Now, shapes are mathematically similar if one is the, an enlargement of the other or a reduction of the other. Now, if triangles are similar, then what we have is that all corresponding angles are equal and that the ratio of corresponding sides is the same. So what you get is an exact enlargement. It's not a distortion. Uh, so you've either scaled up or scaled down. Now, if we take a triangle and if we just take an identical triangle and either enlarge it or reduce it, what you see there is that the angles, the corresponding angles, stay the same. So the angles are all the same size, um, the corresponding angles, that is. So you could say, for example, that this angle here is exactly the same size as this one. This one down here is exactly the same size as this one. And this angle here is exactly the same size as this one. Okay. Now, the ratio of corresponding sides is the same. So this side here, if we call it x, it has been uh, reduced, and the corresponding side is this side, let's call it a. Okay. This side here, if we call it y, this has a corresponding side uh, of, uh, let's call it b. And lastly, if we call this side here, let's call it z, then the corresponding side, or the side that corresponds to z, is the side, let's call it C. So you can see here how this side is, if you like, the equivalent of side Z in the larger triangle. This side A is the equivalent of the side X. So these are what we call corresponding sides. So the ratio of corresponding sides is equal. Uh, what we end up with is a triangle that looks exactly the same. It's not a distortion. It's not been stretched or squashed. It looks the same. It's just been reduced or enlarged. Now, very often in a similar triangle question, you'll be asked to find maybe a missing side or a missing length of some sort. Now, whenever you're looking for something to do with the small triangle, you always use what we call the scale factor of reduction. When you're looking for something that belongs to the large triangle, then you always use the scale factor of enlargement. And that's an important point to remember. Sometimes your similar triangles will maybe look a wee bit kind of disguised, if you like. Now, what we have here, this shape, is in effect two triangles, one stacked on top of the other. So if we just quickly sketch the small one, and we'll quickly sketch the large one. Let's see what we know. Well, we know the small one has a length of 8 centimeters here, uh, but we don't know how big its base is. We know the larger one has a length of 13 centimeters. Here, yeah. and we know its base is 9 centimeters. Now, what are we looking for? We're looking for the base of the small triangle. So you have to find the scale factor of reduction. Now, the scale factor of reduction is just what you get when you take two corresponding sides. So there we have 8 and 13. So the scale factor of reduction is going to be small over large. That's what we're going to use. Because that's what tells us how much smaller the small triangle is than the large one. So to get x, all I need to do is find 8 thirteenths of the side that corresponds to x, which is 9. And when, and when I do that, I end up with an answer to one decimal place of 5.5. And your units will, of course, be centimeters. OK, so that's all you do for that. Let's look at another question. OK. So here again, if we just split up our diagram into a large triangle and a small triangle, then we can just annotate what we know and we can maybe decide what we need to do. Now, in the small triangle, I know the length of two of the sides. I know its base is 8 meters and I know this sloping side is 5 meters. For the large triangle, I know that this side is, well, I can call it 5 plus x and I can call this one here we can call it 13. Now, I'm looking for x. Okay? Now, x isn't actually a side of the triangle. It's a part of the side of the larger triangle. Um, it's a difference between the length of this side and the length of that side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find 5 plus x first, and then I can take 5 away from it to find the answer I'm looking for. Okay? So do we have corresponding sides? Yes, we do. This side corresponds to this side. Now, notice that I'm looking for something to do with a large triangle. So I'm going to use the scale factor of enlargement. 
which is the large corresponding side, over the small corresponding side. So to find x, or to find 5 plus x, I should say, what I need to do is just take that fraction, that scale factor, 13 over 8, and multiply it by the side that corresponds to 5 plus x. So the side that corresponds to 5 plus x is the 5 here. So we do 13 over 8 times 5, and we get an answer of 8.125. Now notice you don't want to find 5 plus x, you want to find x itself. So x is going to be 8.125. You take 5 away from that, and you end up with 3.1 to 1 decimal place. So 3.1 meters is your answer. Okay? Now, looking at this uh, diagram here, what you actually have is two similar triangles. Now, if you, let's just identify that angle with a red dot, then by alternate angles, you think of a back to front Z shape, these angles have to be the same. If I identify this angle with a blue dot, then by, again, alternate angles, that angle is going to be the same as this one here. And finally, if we use maybe a pink dot here, or a purple dot, uh, let's see, we go with pink. By vertically opposite angles, uh, you know that they're going to be the same as well. So you end up with two triangles which have uh, corresponding angles same. So that means that because this six here, uh, because if you like it's between the, the red and the pink, that side corresponds to what's between the red and the pink there. And what's between the blue and the red, the 12, corresponds to what's between the blue and the red up there. So, what have we got? We are looking for, we've got two similar triangles, and we're looking for part of the larger triangle. So we have to find the scale factor of enlargement. So you take two corresponding sides, we've got that there, 12 and 5. It's a scale factor of enlargement, so we do 12 over 5. And to find x, all you do is take your scale factor of enlargement and multiply that by whatever side corresponds to the side you're looking for. So x corresponds to 6, so we multiply that by 6. And we end up with an answer of 14.4 meters. Okay? And that's all you do. Let's have a look at another one. So again, this time, we've got um, this side corresponding to that side. We've got this side corresponding to that side. Okay, just by doing a bit of angle work, like we did in the previous example, you can see that. We're looking for this distance here, okay? And that is a length of one of the smaller triangles. So we're looking for the scale factor of reduction. So that's going to be 9 over 16, small over large, because it's a scale factor of reduction. You should always anticipate what type of answer you should get as well. You know that this answer here is going to be less than 15, because you can see that it's a smaller triangle. So x then is going to be the scale factor of reduction, and you multiply that by 15, because 15 is the side that corresponds to x, and you do 9 over 16, multiply that by 15, and you get an answer of 8.4 centimeters. Okay? Now, try a couple of questions yourselves. See how you get on, pause the video, and then check back and see how things went. Okay? So let's have a look at these then. Okay, we'll get rid of this just now. We'll just shove it down there just now. So, what have we got? Well, maybe you might find it helpful if we do, if we draw we do the large triangle, and we'll draw the small one. Okay? So what do we know about the small one? We know that's 9, we know that's 8. And for the large one, we know that this side here is 12, but we don't know what x is. We're looking for something to do with this, the, the large triangle. So scale factor of enlargement is the first thing you do. These two sides correspond, so you're going to do 12 over 8. That's your scale factor of enlargement. And then you can say, well, x is just going to be the scale factor of enlargement, and you multiply that by 9. And when you do that, you end up with an answer of 13.5 centimeters. Okay? Let's look at 
the second one. Well, you know that this side corresponds to this side. You know that that side corresponds to that side. What are we looking for? We're looking for something to do with a large triangle. So this time, we're going to find the scale factor of enlargement. We take corresponding sides that we know. We know that we've got 11 and 7, that they correspond. So we'll say 11 over 7 as your scale factor of enlargement. And to find x, we just take that scale factor and multiply it by the side that corresponds to x, and that is 4. So we do that, and we get an answer of 6.3 meters. Okay, so that's hopefully what you got yourselves as well. Now, before we finish the video, I just want to show you how sometimes you can get a question that links a couple of different topics together. So here we have uh, the information given as it is, and you're told that uh, you're to find, or you're asked to find x. Okay. Now, what do we know? Well, we know that this is 18. We know that this is 8. We know that this is x. But the other dimension we're given isn't actually one of the lengths of the triangles at all. It's the length from this triangle's corner to the smaller triangle's corner. Now, because we know that these triangles are similar, we know that the ratio um, of corresponding sides is going to be the same. So what I'm going to do is, instead of focusing on this blue bit here, that's 25 centimeters, I'm going to just focus on this length here. And if that's 25, and that's x, then this must be 25 minus x. Okay? And I just want you to notice that this side, although we don't know what it is, corresponds to x. And I want you to notice that this side here corresponds to 8. Now, because the ratio of corresponding sides is going to be the same, I can say that 18 over 8 is going to be the same as 25 minus x over x. So if you take the two pairs, big over small will be equal to big over small, if you like. Okay? Now you've got to find x. So what you've done is you've constructed an equation based on what you know about similar triangles. Now you've got a fraction equal to a fraction, so what will we do? To get everything onto one level, we will just use cross multiplication. So the product of the diagonals, let's say that we um, do this first, so we'll say 8 brackets 25 minus x is equal to 18 times x. Now 8 times 25, that's going to be 200, so we have 200 minus 8x, that's equal to 18x, okay? If we add 8x to both sides, they cancel out, and you end up with 200 is equal to 26x, or in other words, 26x is equal to 200. And dividing both sides by 26, you end up with x to one decimal place being 7.7, .7, and your units were centimeters, okay? 7.7 .7 centimeters. So that's an example of a question that links together a couple of the topics you've covered in uh, the course so far. So that's similar triangles. Remember, the ratio of corresponding sides will be the same. And remember to use, if you're looking for something to do with a large triangle, use the scale factor of enlargement. And if you're looking for something to do with the small triangle, use the scale factor of reduction. So I hope that was helpful.